Hey guys and welcome to Property Investment News. I'm Brett Leggerwood and today is Wednesday the 18th of November 2015. So today, it's a mixed bag, actually. You want to start off with a bit of a negative story um, about what's going on in London, certainly at the higher end of the market. Um, but then I think as we move through today, you'll see that actually a lot of the fears and a lot of things that people are talking about being negative are actually unfounded, aren't being seen in the market. And actually things are quite upbeat still. Um, although it's upbeat with lots of different things happening. So there's been a lot of changes. And so that is the big thing that's causing you know, change is never good. People want certainty, okay? And when they've got certainty, they're prepared to act. So there is a little bit of, you know, two-sidedness in the market right now, as opposed to being all positive or all negative. Um, and certainly there's a lot of confusion about the tax and whether it's gonna be in, um, you know, the new tax, the bites let tax. So anyway, we'll get started. So just looking at this first one, uh, article, Tories harming London market more than Labor would have done, okay? Now, the reality is, this is, there's a truth to this, certainly at the higher end of the market. The lower end of the market, not so much, but you know, when you consider stamp duty changes that happen, you know, the property tax, non-DOM reform, buy to let taxation, the mortgage market review for mortgages, you know, all these things are playing a part in this. Meant there's a lot of change, a lot of uncertainty, and that is affecting the market. And when you look at, say, a six million pound property, okay, which I know most people you know, don't even think about, but there's about 700 or a quarter of a million pounds worth of property fees attached to the buying that. That's that's not able to be lent. That is money you have to lay out out of your pocket. So not only are you buying that property, but you're also going to pay all those fees. So it's quite hefty fees. And you know, I mean look, it's it's all good to say evening out the marketplace because you know that's one of the things that you know the Chancellor's talking about, crackdown, um, you know, is evening the market, you know, level playing field between new people getting onto the market and, and existing buy let mongers. I don't think it's really done that. I think it's turned the other way a little bit in terms of it's turned against buy to let investors. It's not as good as it was. It's not as attractive as it was. Do I think it's actually going to get in the full force of the thing? I don't actually. I think this guys, I think they're stepping a bit too far. And I think what will happen, there'll be a rebellion. They'll be out in you know the next three years um, you know, of parliament unless they turn and, and you know start really supporting the people who have supported them. Um, and the interesting thing here, you know, one of these articles that says, you know, Chancellor's crackdown may threaten the profitability of buy to let and drive some landlords out of the market. That's true. But the reality is, is it going to have a big enough impact that people turn away in droves? No, because where are you going to put your money? There's nothing else that actually performs as well as buy to let, you know, so what else are you going to go to? The reality is, that's, you know, that's the thing you're faced with. What are you going to turn to? And really, there's nothing else like buy to let. Um, certainly in the UK, and you know, if there was, I'd probably be selling it. But the reality is still, even with all these changes, there's still a lot of positive and there's still a lot of good in the marketplace. Um, and there's, you know, the interesting thing is master strategist or political blunderer, will the real George Osman please stand up? There's starting to be a lot of articles about, you know, is this guy just a monkey in a, in a suit? And, and to a degree, I think some of the things that he's doing are just taking a step too far, okay? And that's my concern. I think because they won the election, they won it quite convincingly, they've almost feel like they've got an arrogance, you know, and that's one of the problems with the Conservatives, is they can get an arrogance about them and they think they've got a remit to do whatever they want. You know, you might find that that's not necessarily the case and that actually people start turning away from them and they start getting negative articles like this, okay? Um, interestingly, and you know, this is where I always say don't believe the media because the media hype around Northern Rock was you know, Northern Rock, bad bank. Now, I've got mortgages, I've got lots of mortgages with a bad bank. I was one of these bad bankers, you know, if you like, or the mortgages at least, um, you know, where everyone thought that because uh, there was 125% loans available and all these sort of things, that they're just gonna default. That hasn't been the case. And in fact, actually what they're finding is people have paid on time and keeping this thing. So this is, you know, the government's actually made money out of buying this Northern Rock. So what was such a negative thing you know, and um, oh, what's his name? Fred, um, forgotten his name, got stripped of his knighthood. You know, the reality is actually the business and the bank was actually a good asset. And that's what you're finding now. And that's what I've always maintained the whole way along. You know, securitization was actually a good thing and done well. And in the UK, it was done well. US, maybe not. But the problem was the fear mongers and the media got hold of this Northern Rock run on the bank and basically wrote it for all it's worth. That hasn't been the case. It's been a profitable investment for the government. 
So, you know, this, this part of it. Maybe not HBOS, and we'll see what happens with a few other things, a few other assets, but certainly Northern Rock, what was supposed to be, you know, this climatic, you know, catastrophic thing, actually has turned out to be quite a good thing um, because people just aren't defaulting. Yeah. So uh, let's get on to the good stuff that's happening because actually a lot of good stuff and a lot of positivities in the market. And really, if I want you to take away something from today is that actually all developers that I know and everyone I'm speaking to are very positive about the future and are actually looking forward to positive things happening. You know, Taylor Wimpy, optimistic about the property market. You know, you've got Barrett's and reassured over strong UK property market. You know, and this is what I'm hearing from everyone I speak to, all the developers I speak to, is that actually their plans haven't changed. And if anything, they're ramping them up, okay? There is going to be a building boom for the next five, 10, 15, 20 years in the UK. So really, this is the time to be getting involved in it. You know, London's already you know, shot up, and actually now where the ripple effect has taken effect, so we're out as far as you know the major cities, the major towns. I think will come on, and as I've said all along, you know, 2017 I think will be the year that everything's clear, everything's back to normal, and everywhere in the UK is growing and has sort of shaken off that recession. You know, and it was a big recession. Make no mistake, it was a massive recession. I think part of it was the recession, and part of it was the way that we dealt with it, that we dealt with it, the politicians dealt with it, which I think was um, incorrectly. Yeah. Um, so house prices, house prices offer a little respite for buyers. What does that mean? Well, they're still going up, you know, and actually they're still creeping up. Now, sure you're gonna have re uh, variances and that sort of stuff, you're gonna find that actually house prices won't go up as much now, why? Because it's cold, there's not as weather, people don't wanna go out as much. So actually it's interesting because I, I've just um, invested in Property TV, which is a new TV channel. And um, one of the things they're expecting is over the next four months, five months through winter, is when viewership goes up, you know. People don't want to go out and view properties. What they want to do is watch it on TV, you know. And it's an interesting thing like that. That's the reality, okay. You know, property house prices are set to rise 4% next year. I think they're going to ri rise actually a little bit more. But next week, I'm going to give you a bit of an idea of what my uh, predictions are for the next five years from a trends um, cycle, but also for the next year in terms of a percentage. This year, I predicted 5% and it's pretty much, you know, I'm on par with that. So that's been quite good. Just out of interest, if you're interested, I've written a book called How to Predict House Prices. Yeah? So have a read of that. It gives you a really good idea of why you shouldn't listen to property experts, including myself, and how to replace their expert advice yeah, with your own national certainty, with your own ability to be able to predict trends in house prices. Okay, guys, have a great day, and remember, live with passion.